My house was built brick by brick Kick the doors and kick the kids The children rose without a sound To burn the suburbs to the ground Our heads exploded with the notion Life is full of different potions Oceans cry, suns would rise Hands on fire, stomach thighs The kids alive, the kids alive Take the rich woods, make them pay Welcome to the suburbs Where we all have money And our parents are proud of all our money Welcome to the suburbs Where we all have cash And our buttons are high With our Ralph Lauren tags And our conscience is smeared With our tongues and our matches The suburbs are dead Now everybody's dead Dollar bills are stacked, get your girlish figure back. Alpha Romeo on track, a hundred miles an hour and back. To the doctors, make them pay your child support. Every day the lawyer offers suburb bank. Took the twenties from the tank, the judge he shot with dollar bills. For every sickness there's a pill, they're the rich ones, watch them kill. Welcome to the suburbs where we all have money and our parents are proud of all our money. Welcome to the suburbs where we all have cash and our buttons are high with our Ralph Lauren tags and our conscience is smeared. Our tongues and our matches, the suburbs are dead. Now everybody's dead. was built brick by brick kick the doors and kick the kids the children rose without a sound to burn the suburbs to the ground my house was built brick by brick kick the doors and kick the kids the children rose without a sound to burn the suburbs to the ground my house was built brick by brick kick the doors and kick the kids the children rose without a sound to burn the suburbs to the ground my house was built Brick by brick, kick the doors and kick the kids The children rose without a sound To burn the suburbs to the ground My house was built brick by brick Kick the doors and kick the kids The children rose without a sound To burn the suburbs to the ground Hello and welcome to the show. This is East Tennessee Music Scene on the Rise. I am Scott Thomas, along with the, these two from Night Colors. What's up? Hi. Hi. So uh, let me know about you guys. Um, how did you come together? Yeah, so it was kind of an early process because we're brothers and sisters, so yeah. been oh. together since birth, but yeah. um, at least for Hannah, I guess <laughs> for I'm me. older than her, so. <laughs> but, um, Music's always kind of been in our family, yeah. as far as um, the appreciation for it. Um, and we started playing at a young age, and it kind of just became a thing we did for a while. Like we okay. would sing together on holidays, and the, I, I think probably about like four years ago is when it got serious for us playing together. Okay. And we decided we were gonna uh, make a band and start playing music together. I've always liked writing music and enjoyed that process but we kind of wanted to make it a little bit more lively and that's kind of been the whole journey now of like trying to get there. So, I think it was summer of 2016 yeah. that I called her and asked if she wanted to be in a band. Yeah. 
he called me and uh, he was like, I've been thinking. He'd been going to music festivals and yeah. stuff with his wife. And um, yeah, he called me and was like, I've been thinking maybe we should be making music together. And he's like, take some time and think about it. And I just told him, I was like, I don't need time to think. I was like, I'm in. Yeah, that sounds good. So once we got back together, uh, we started working on stuff and just keep it on going ever since. So Night Colors in general, is it just you two or do you have more members that are not present today? Just us. Just mm -hmm. us. We do have a team of people we'll use for a lot of stuff and I mean, yeah. like we work with our producer a lot and have band members that we hire on stage, yeah. but we like to keep it pretty close-knit and we figured the less people involved, the easier it is to keep it going. For know? the creative process, two people yeah. are easier to work around mm -hmm. than four or five. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody adding stuff together. Right. And like sometimes you want that. Sometimes you want the creative energy of like an actual collective. Yeah. And then um, in this case, that's not exactly what we were aiming for. Um, musically, we're able to get a little bit of the creativity from being in the studio and working with the producer and using other members or other people just to record the album, but keeping the writing pretty close to home yeah. is the goal. Well, you guys have very good harmonies together. Thank you. We just heard your mm -hmm. song there a little while ago. <laughs> you guys were awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. Do you have uh, any albums out right now? So, we released our first project called How the Night Began. <clears throat> in August. It was August 10th mm -hmm. and that's our first thing we released. So just six songs in all we have another single out um, but we're in the works working on more projects right now but that one's up on Spotify and iTunes and nice. it's just um, how the night began. Oh, cool. So, yeah it's really we were, we're really proud of it. We were in the studio for a good while about two years trying to get it how we liked it and it was a long process but one we're proud of and there were times throughout it that it felt a little bit like it never happened, but you know now it's out. Proud of it, and now striving for the next next big thing we're gonna do. So. That's cool. Yeah. You guys have um, toured around the uh, this region, or so where we're at right now with shows is we we try not to play a ton of out of town shows or honestly in town shows during the recording process, just because. We didn't really have anything to send people to. Like we had one song out, yeah. And we were like, if we we're gonna go play, and if people enjoyed our show, they're not gonna be able to actually go listen to the music. So it's kind of this weird thing that we didn't want to um, dive into. So we we waited until August to really start pursuing shows, um, and we played quite a few from August until now. We have one in Atlanta before the end of the year, but. The main goal is we're working towards a tour in the early spring of next year. So that's cool. that's kind of. Do you weird. have any set spots you're planning on seeing in that tour? Yeah. So right now, we'll of course be back in Knoxville, but we're going to be hitting up Atlanta. Um, we're really liking the music scene there right now. Nashville, Asheville, Johnson City, Paducah. There's a lot of just like semi-regional kind of like yeah. local areas that we're going to try to deal with right now and then hopefully within the next year or two, work more on going out west and getting into a few other places, you know? And sometimes opportunities like that present themselves and if they do, we'd of course pursue it. But right now we're trying, at least on our focus and what we're pursuing yeah. is to do more local and semi-local shows and build up a little bit more of a fan base. Kind of like the here. East Tennessee region up into Tri-Cities and yeah. uh, Eastern Kentucky? Yeah, yeah, trying to get more around here. Cause honestly, you know, this is where we're at right now. This is our home, and we'd much rather build a, a fan base around this area instead of like going out immediately out west and like, oh, now we have some people who like us out here. But you know, if your own home doesn't support you, it's you know you're kind of counterproductive. So that's that's our goal right now is to see how much we can do here and then expand go. on that. Yes. Exactly. It's better to. Start small and think big, right. then start big and end up small. Right. <laughs> like we have big goals and big ideas of what we want to do, and to achieve those, you know, it's it's not just like oh we're doing this now. You know, yeah. it has to be like thought through and planned out, and that's that's really the, our job right now is like 
we're going to play shows and figure out the best way to create a performance and an experience. And then once we do that, then we can bring it to people. And right, you know, we're, we're in that process right now, and we have been for a while, and probably will continue to be in that process yeah. throughout our career. But, you know, it's good to remind ourselves of, and it keeps you, like, humble and keeps you striving for something compared Definitely. to just, like, getting all up in your head being like, oh, we did it, and, you know, you just played one show in yeah. town. You know, like, you got to, like, yeah. it's a lot bigger than that. You need to build up from the yeah. ground up, right? Exactly, yeah. Start from the bottom. Even from the basement. Sometimes. Yeah, start from the basement. <laughs> That's cool. Um, what most of the viewers here would probably want to know is, what is your genre? Okay, so, I don't want to get too up in the air about this and make it seem just all mystical, but you, you know, we, we've put synth pop on a lot of stuff or indie yeah. pop. In the end, that doesn't really define it because it's not pop music, it's not all synthy music. I think in the end, and like for me personally, it stems back to when I'm writing it and like I just want to write music that I think means something to me and hopefully to other people yeah. when they hear it. You know, and some of those songs are going to be synth heavy. Some of them are going to be poppy and maybe fun and enjoyable because like yeah. there's happiness in life that you want to experience. And then some of them are going to be kind of rough and a little bit, you know, personal feeling. Yeah. Some of them are good. It's, to me, it's less about like the instrumentation we're going to be using for each song. Yeah. And then more about what we're trying to convey. Now, I feel like you could probably categorize it as like alternative or indie pop yeah but at the same time if like next year we decide we want to make electronic dance music then yeah like, I guess we're gonna do electronic <laughs> dance music so try not to label it too hard but then again I mean you kind of have to have the genre out there because people want to know you know what kind of music are we listening to and we're not 100% sure how to define that yet so that may well, come with time maybe it would be better conveyed as to your um, influences in your writing. So yeah. what kind of influences do you have and sort people can sort of form their own opinions of, of what you sound like. That is a, like. a great way yeah. to go around it. So um, a lot of 80s influences, that definitely stems into the music production side of it more than the lyrical quality. Um, to me, uh, there's a lot of artists we're inspired by lyrically that like, like some of the more late 80s era people who were writing about like problems in the world, that's a big inspiration for me right now. Yeah. Um, people like John Lennon or um, even like Queen or stuff like that. That's been like the big inspiration for me right now. But there's a lot of more modern bands. Hannah's a big fan of the Cranberries. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we try to incorporate a lot of different styles. Peter Gabriel is a big influence, Phil Collins. So we try to use a lot of these people we've listened to all growing up. A few random people like Dan Fogelberg is someone we've always enjoyed and he's more of a story driven writer. So okay. he writes about like like all in like I'm gonna tell the story as I yeah. start writing and we don't do that in every song but there's definitely that inspiration there that's kind of like pushing us. Um, and there's a lot there's a band called M eighty three that I I love production wise. He creates like these big explosions when okay. he plays so like and that's kind of something we tried to do in quite a few of our songs is like the ends of the songs on the recording and on the project are you know they, they grow throughout the song so it starts out a lot of times very small and works its way up until like we really can't give it any more than we're giving it it's just like everybody's going like full-fledged so it's like like suburbs as an example the song that we played is starts out on just like a piano and then it constantly is growing like verse to chorus it grows from that chorus to the next verse it's growing and you just we brought in a lot of elements each time so by the time you get up to that last bridge it's just like going full on yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly don't know if we could have pushed it any more than we did even in the studio because it was like almost too far we were just like everybody was going out the drums are crazy and everything yeah. but it, it creates such a unique experience 
not only for us live when we're up there playing it because it's a cool experience to have that emotion yeah. of just like release, like you're just giving it away. And I, I think it creates a cool experience in the crowd for people as well because it's like, whoa, this is not where I saw this going. Now all of a sudden, like it's this weird, huge explosion and yeah. it started out and it was just that piano. So it creates a unique and weird experience, but that's an M83. <laughs> okay. He does a lot of big explosions. And I'll have to check that out. I don't think I've ever checked anything out by that. Okay, cool. Yeah, M83. M83. He's, he's kind of a, he, it's like synth music, okay. but not in the normal way of thinking about it. So a different approach to it for sure. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Young Pat, believe me when I say your mother and I, we had to fight to stay alive back then. Anything else that's, uh, coming up for you guys in the distant future because this may not be out for a bit. Oh, a bit. no, that's totally fine. Yeah, so um, right now we're really focusing on creating a visual live representation of us. So we're working on like a stage design and stuff. So we're going to have a lot, a lot of cool things coming up just for how we look on stage and different props we're going to be using, um, which I won't get too elaborate in right now, but it's in the works right now. Yeah. Um, so you're still building upon your brand. Oh, totally. I mean, even to think like, we just released our first EP, and that was three months ago. Okay. And, you know, if if we could could have already built the brand in three months, like we'd be insane geniuses. So like <laughs> we get, we got some work for us ahead of us, and even a lot of that is our visual components online that's yeah. that's where a lot of our focus is going to be over the next few months um, of course playing shows and then we have a lot a lot of other songs already written that are just kind of waiting to be recorded yeah and that, that's kind of the the next move is like get the live show exactly where we want it get our li our online presence and how people see us how we want it and then go back in the studio and try to do it all again Okay. Hopefully even do it better than last time, <laughs> so that's, that's the end goal. That's a, a great goal for most any band to have, yeah. to improve themselves, to re, well not reinvent, but invent your, right. your personas and your brand and all that good stuff. Right, yeah, that's, that's the goal, so hopefully that's where we go. Well, going back to the early days uh -huh. of you, you two playing together or not playing together, um, you have, have you always been a vocalist or do you play instruments as well? Um, yeah, so I've always loved singing, but I didn't ever do it in front of anybody, like just family. Um, wouldn't sing in front of my friends or anything. And then I kind of, I guess what it was is Eli got a new instrument and he gave me his guitar and was like, hey, you can use this. Uh, you should just, just play with it. And I always tried to like, he'd play piano, he'd be writing songs and I'd go and I'd try to like play them myself and I'd, okay. you know, figure them out, you know, just mess with it a little. But uh, after he loaned me his guitar, I started, I guess, feeling comfortable, more comfortable singing in front of people, and yeah. then it was just a process from there. Uh, and then when Eli, you know, asked me to to be in a band with him, it just went from there. So now I play, I play keys, I play some some synth stuff. And she'll she'll actually be playing. Oh, yeah. that part of the live show we'll be doing. She'll be doing more instruments as well yeah. on stage. Cool. And as of right now, she <laughs> hasn't really. She's done a few times yeah, with the synth up there, but more purposeful yeah. playing parts. Well, like yeah. the song that we just heard on our show here, you were mainly just singing, mm -hmm. but your, your vocals, your harmonies, it was just matching together perfectly mm -hmm. along with the acoustic playing. I, I don't know how many times you play acoustically in your shows, but the way you did up here would be an excellent laid back kind of well, thank acoustic you so style. Much. We appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not much of a guitarist, so that's not like kind of where we put it, but it is fun to bring it back. I mean, that's definitely how we used to play at home was just like yeah. on a guitar and sing through the song. So there is a sense of, you know, nostalgia it brings us back a little bit playing like that. So yeah. it feels natural. That's awesome.
Anna and Elijah, night colors, along with a mismatch of a bunch of other people to yeah. go along with you. So true. On your records and maybe even live shows. Yeah, live shows we always have at least two people playing yeah. behind as a drummer and a guitar player. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we try to use a lot of people. Well, hearing you guys today just makes me want to find out more about you. So okay. um, let everybody know, again, your social media stuff, your uh, musical uh, website you yeah. have where your music's available. Perfect. So we're on Spotify as just Night Colors, and you can find us and go to How the Night Began. Our website's nightcolorsmusic.com, and our Instagram and Facebook's Night Colors Music. And you, I think our Twitter's Night Colors Band. So um, that's the only difference. But you should be able to find anything you need by typing in Night Colors Music on Google. Just type it in and yeah. it pull up whatever you're looking for. So. And let's not forget to mention how people book you. Oh, yeah, you can book us just by going to contact at nightcolorsmusic.com. We'll play tons of shows. We love playing <laughs> music. So. We want to get these two out and about. Yeah. On the road. Everywhere as far as we can reach them. Yeah, <laughs> New York City I think would be really fun. Yes. So. So we'll, we will get this video out as quick as possible cool. and hopefully expand your fan base. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you guys coming yeah, along. Thank you. Yeah. It's a little cold, really. Thank you. Really. So thank you. <laughs> this has been East Tennessee Music Scene on the Rise. I'm Scott Thomas, along with Night Colors, Hannah and Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>